Hello, my sweet and very beloved patrons. Um, it's been a while. I am back with another video today on um, painting spring flowers. Um, so we're going to continue where we left off last time in our little sketchbook. I'll just open it. Where was it? Oh, there we go. We had made, well, we had painted this daisy and we were following these printouts that I made of daisies and of poppies. So today I'll be drawing for you this type of daisy, shall we say? Um, if you have another word for it, please let me know. Um, here, in our sketchbooks. Um, so I'll just set everything out. I brought, sorry, did I just move the camera again? Sorry about that. I brought some colours that I thought I'd use. The colours that I am um, planning on using today is this Lunar Red Rock, um, Payne's Grey, which is the Schmincke Horridum one. I think it's called Payne's Grey Blue Shade, or something like that. It's like a blue um, tinted Payne's Grey. Um, I'm going to use this um, Schmincke Horridum um, Van Dyke Brown. And for green, I probably will mix the Payne's Grey, which is kind of blue, um, with this um, Quinacridone Gold, which is a Michael Harding. So, and, um, okay, so I've got my water here. I have my two brushes. I have a Da Vinci number two brush, a Da Vinci number four brush, their series 35, a Da Vinci Maestro Tobolsky. I have a pencil. I have my eraser. Um, I've got Baloo snoozing <laughs> on my chair behind me and I am ready to paint. So I'll just set everything out and um, set everything so that I can move because my table is so small um, and I'll be back and we'll begin painting. See you in a bit. So in my haste to begin filming, I forgot to bring my two micron pens, which I uh, got up um, and got from my uh, bookcase. They're Sakura Micron Pigma 003 in sepia, sepia? sepia <laughs> and pigma micron 005 in uh, sepia sepia um, so let's begin so um, today I will be drawing I will be drawing together hopefully this now Um, and I thought we'd, we'd put it here, somewhere here, next to our daisy. Um, so we're going to break down the, the shape first and draw that onto our postcard. I don't know where all these eraser bits are coming from. There are a tiny eraser bits coming from somewhere, and I don't know from where. Okay. Um, anyway, so I'll go through my thought process when I see a flower like this, or an image like this. Um, I try and break down the image into shapes. So I've got this shape here, which to me looks like this. Don't know if you can see that, it's quite small. 
and then I have this larger shape here which looks like kind of a, an umbrella with this shape underneath so that is my basic shape and then we've got this which is the stem which should be kind of here so I'm going to start with that I'm going to just start with the shape and from there we're going to build the details together let's do this so I'm going very gently with my pencil and doing the first shape which is this so it's like a, a semicircle and then you have this these two sides going upwards like two two hands and going up and then you have this line here and then I'm going to go underneath from this point and do like an umbrella shape it doesn't have to be perfect this is fantasy drawing this is not um, this is not realism so we are taking the essentials and we'll build our flower on those essentials like um, like a foundation so these shapes are uh, the foundation of our image I'm going to find with my my eyes where the middle is approximately I go down and draw that imaginary line and I'm going to go on either side of the line and draw another line and that is going to be our stem So that is the basic shape of our flower. Um, now for the petals. So you can see the petals are narrow. I don't know if you can see that. Hope you can. Are narrower towards the center. They become wider as they go out. So I'll just do that so you can see it better wider and then come to a point also there is a curve so there's a curve that occurs in the petals and you'll see this as you go through if you go through every single petal you'll see there's a curve there are no straight lines very rarely there are straight lines in nature and this even this isn't straight, this is like, um, here it is um, thicker, here it's thinner. But for the sake of our drawing, we're going with a straight line underneath as a stem. Um, so we're going to start adding petals to our shape. Drawing the curve first, which is the middle of the petal, just helps. It just helps us get it right narrow wide point let's do that here so we're starting narrow and widening the area here and to a point narrow and to a point okay so there we have our basic um, daisy shape um, as you can see in this we have overlapping so there are there's like layers there's one layer okay Baloo's <laughs> Baloo's stirring in his box um, so if you can hear some scratching that's Baloo where was I um, there is 
the first layer of petals on top and then there's another layer of petals on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some petals underneath. I'm going to start because um, I want to be sure that I'm not using too much ink. I'm going to start with 003 first. If I find that that is too, um, too faint, I'll go on and add 005. I'll go on and use 005. So it is quite faint, but I'm going to start with that. It's more forgiving. There's a mistake, which I do make mistakes. I make them all the time. <laughs> I can just improvise with a thicker pen on top and you can't, well, I can't really see it afterwards. Um, some cross hatching, some lines, it, it kind of disappears. I mean, um, you can't erase pen, but you can help in making it kind of vanish into the background if you make a mistake, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do that underneath. And hmm, do I want to do, I think I'm going to just improvise and put another one here like that just a little bit okay we'll do more to it later we start adding color I must not fuss I have this um, really bad habit of fussing on paintings, on drawings, on anything, even in my sketchbook. I just fuss and I don't let go of things until they look like absolutely spot on. And I'm going, don't do that. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be perfect if it's in your sketchbook. But I, I do. <laughs> um, right now we're going to start adding colour. So here I have my little tiny, tiny little uh, paint box. Um, I've got my Payne's Grey is here and this is my Van Dyke Brown. I am going to start adding shadows with my Van Dyke Brown. So I am going to put some onto my palette slash plate here and add quite a lot of water to make it as diluted as I want it to be and I'm going to start from here adding a little bit of shadow So I'm going to try and bring out the semi-spherical nature of this, the top here, and now I am going to just add some shadow on this side. So I add a dab of Van Dyke Brown and then I soften it. Dab of Van Dyke and then soften with some water. When I say soften, I mean um, just clean your brush, pick up a little bit of water and help basically soften the edges of the watercolour so um, there are no hard edges 
and now to wait for it to dry. Oh, there's so much waiting in watercolour. Um, I don't use a hair hair dryer because I used to when I started because I was thinking this is silly I'm sitting here waiting for water, uh, watercolor to dry but I found that using a hair dryer would damage the paper especially if I wanted to um, do many layers so I stopped doing it um, it doesn't mean that you can't do it or um, I don't know use a fan or something if you want it to dry um, sooner I've just learned that when I'm doing things um, I'll show you I'll show you while this is drying I'll show you what I mean um, I, I, at the moment I'm working on these two and it is not uncommon for me to have two paintings on the go because I do some of this while that's waiting to dry I go over here <laughs> do some of this while that's waiting to dry I go over here so um, I usually have something else to do while I wait otherwise it's just so much time um, that I have to wait for watercolor to dry so now we've done that, we've done the preliminary shadows, we are going to start adding some colour, which is the best part in my opinion, colouring in. For the petals, I'm going to use Payne's Grey, the Schmincke Horridum Blue Shade Payne's Grey. Um, I'm going to just put some on my palette. I love this colour. I've been using it so much. I've been using it in some of my originals as well um, that I've been working on lately. I just love it. Such a beautiful, beautiful colour. Very moody, muted. For the petals, I am not going to paint the petal completely with blue. I'm going to start at the tip. I'm going to add some water. Sorry, I'm going to add some colour, not water. And then I am going to wash my brush, put some water on it, and then drag the colour. I'm going to go and do this for every single petal. It's almost Easter. Can you believe it? It was like, yes, well, last week it was Christmas. <laughs> and now it's almost Easter. We, we have Easter here, we have the Greek Orthodox Easter, which is, I believe it's going to be on the 16th or is it the 17th of April? And it is, it's lovely, I love Easter here. It's very beautiful. One of the things that uh, remind me of Easter, oh, one thing that I kind of connect with Easter are uh, the smell of lemon blossom and orange blossom because all the oranges, orange trees and the lemon trees are all in blossom usually around Easter and um, we go shopping somewhere where it's kind of out in the supermarket it's a bit strange it's it's kind of by itself in the fields. It is, it's a strange supermarket. It has lovely stuff, but it's, it's a strange supermarket. And whenever we drive there, um, we go through these fields, these, sorry, these orchards. Would you call them orchards of oranges and lemon trees? And I just open the window and just inhale. It's just so beautiful. The, 
the smell is so gorgeous oh I, I love lemon blossom and orange blossom I am rambling again <laughs> so now we've done that I am going to use some lunar red rock which is it which suits I think the panes gray very well put a little bit on my palette and just dilute it enough to put my first layer down now this color I'm going to use for the center of the flower I'm just looking at the time that I've been videoing and this is going to be a long video my apologies um, so I'm, I'm putting a little bit down and then spreading it but leaving that little highlight there now for the stem I am going to use Um, hmm. okay, I did say I'm going to use some Payne's Grey, which I have here. Might need a little bit more. And some Queen Acridone Gold, which I have here. That should make a pretty green, which it does. And I am going to just go to the left side of my stem and put color down because the light is coming from the right side so there's going to be more color well, there's going to be more darkness color is going to be darker to the left of the stem so that's why I I draw the line I draw I put the color down to the left of the stem okay so while that is drying a little bit let's have some fun with our washi tape so let's do a pattern and I'll take some of my lunar red rock and just paint that in so we have our washi tape and with our pattern there and here we're just gonna add a little bit more color so it looks a bit more 3d tiny bit here as well That looks fine now back to our center here and I am going to start adding my little dots there and some lines there maybe just some dots that come out and above the flower just for fun so lift it a bit up um, and that is our second flower and for our next video we're going to move to this side and do something completely different oh no we will do flowers but it won't be a daisy that's what i mean completely different and we forgot to put our colors next to it so before i do that before i i leave i am going to put my little color palette next to it So this is the Payne's Grey Blue shade by Schmincke Horridum. 
This is the Lunar Red Rock. And this is a mix of quinacridone gold and the Payne's Grey, the Schmincker Horrid and Payne's Grey. There we go. Our two flowers. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too long for you. Um, I, I'm so, so, so grateful to you all for supporting me. Um, I, I love you guys so very, very much. I hope that um, you enjoy the packages that uh, you receive every month. I can tell you that a lot. Of love and affection goes into every single package I, I really do try to show you how much you mean to me through those packages um, I hope you can feel it um, I am going to leave you here I'm going to probably go and continue writing the uh, the legend of Sir Naif with Baloo on my lap he has this thing about me when I'm typing on my laptop, the stories. He comes and nestles between me and the laptop. So I've got my uh, my arms are like extended like that <laughs> to type, uh, which makes it very difficult, but it is a very nice feeling to have him snuggle with me when I'm writing. It is, a, it is um, he's such a very, very affectionate little boy. I love him to bits. Anyway, rambling again. Thank you so much. I have I said much how much you mean to me. I hope I did. You mean the world to me, all of you. Thank you, and I hope to see you all soon again um, with another video. I hope you'll be here and enjoy that one as well. I'm I'm rambling. Okay, <laughs> okay, guys. Bye, 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 bye.